Chances are you've heard Mark Mothersbaugh's music, but where depends on your taste. Rock fans go to see him perform with the punk band Evo. Kids giggle to his tunes in Rugrats. It's very unusual for someone to have this kind of double threat career. Saturday morning television, it's just not punk rock. Or is it? Devo created cartoons for the first music videos half a decade before MTV. We talked our record companies into letting us make these short films, and they were like, why do you want to do that? The art student from Akron, Ohio, had an idea that people were more likely to buy music they could also see. It helped Devo sell six million albums. But Mark wanted to do more with his time. He opened one of the busiest musical factories in the world. Can we take out that one guitar that's going... It took off after he composed a little something back in the 80s that nearly every kid hummed. The theme to Pee Wee's Playhouse. After that, so much work came so quickly, his brother Bob and the rest of Devo decided to pitch in. Whatever he picked up was suddenly really like a beautiful creation. He's more talented than he knows. <laughs> Mark thrived on the challenge. The pace of writing rock and roll music about 10 a year had become boring. Now he was writing and producing eight a week to fit any taste. Willie Nelson recorded one. So did O.J. Simpson. It was called, We Are All Winners. Turn on TV. We did it. Go to a movie. Play a video game. Mother's Boss music is probably there in the background. Most rock musicians, I would say, would be uncomfortable if their music was not center stage. How prominent the music is doesn't affect how important it is, I don't think. Music can tell, tell the story, where sometimes words weren't enough or where pictures weren't enough. In other words, his music can save a story. That's attractive to movie directors. Wes Anderson has asked him to score all of his films, including Rushmore, The Royal Tenenbaums, and The Life Aquatic. A lot of the work really just happens with the two of us sitting in the room together, and I can tell him what I'm looking for, and he can do something right there in the moment. Be nice to have a little breath there. Ad agencies like that, too. And the whole cut Mark is composes actually... tunes for more than 100 products a year. To some, it may seem strange. His rock band, Devo, once poked fun at commercials. What did the angry young man of rock and roll have to offer an advertiser? Besides subliminal messages? Uh, I hear see. you used to put those in some of your commercials. I, I've heard that rumor too. Was it a myth? Well, if I don't have to tell you what commercials, I can tell you it absolutely wasn't. Even so, producers like the unique sound he creates. Mark uses instruments that are not always traditional. And I said, yeah, yeah. Nothing about his life yeah, yeah. is traditional. Said, yeah. The man who has composed some of our best-loved children's music has recently become a first-time father. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why'd you wait so long? You're 55. And I always thought, oh, I'm too selfish for that. How did the new baby change your life? I'm not the center of the universe, I found out. <laughs> That revelation prompted Mark to do something no rock star has ever done. Let kids record his greatest hits. Correct and whip. Give the pass a slam. Step on the crack. Preteens may love the redo, but daughter Margaret's favorite singers? The Muppets. Keep believing, keep pretending. Ironically, the one children's show that has none of her dad's music. One day you'll be the coolest guy on the block. Again. I'm not holding my breath for that. <laughs> yeah, Daddy O. Whoa, for today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, with an American story in Hollywood. Whoa!